Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive SBGA201 in stainless steel. You can see and you can purchase this handsome and versatile Grand Seiko timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Grand Seiko SBGA201. Now, the watch on my wrist is compelling, handsome, broadly wearable over a large range of wrist sizes and thanks to a combination of a slim profile, versatile metal and dial, and 100 meter water resistance, there's almost no occasion short of professional piloting or professional diving where this watch wouldn't be the ideal choice. Now on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the size is contemporary but not oversized. It measures, as my calipers read it, 40.5 millimeters across the round of the case from 9 to 3, not inclusive of the crown. It's reasonably slim as well as I measured 13.2 millimeters thick with a generously sloped conical bezel that will allow it to slide underneath not just a suit jacket sleeve but also the dress cuff beneath. From lug to lug, the watch is fairly compact. I would say 48.6 millimeters is rather constrained for a 40 plus round case. If you include the solid end links of the bracelet, it does swell to 50.8 millimeters. I should mention that because it does feature perforated lugs, the better to rapidly and easily swap out the bracelet and straps. It's important to note that if you want to throw this one on a strap, the lug spacing is 19 millimeters, so order your accessories accordingly. A handsome timepiece, it also feels substantial on the wrist as the bracelet is comfortable and silken in its in its tactile impression but also physically imposing as you look at it it appears all of a piece you can see the contrast between the polish and the satin elements but you really only see the gaps between the links when you view it from underneath just enough of a gap to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair the tolerances here are as good as anything you will see from Omega or Rolex and you'll note that Sizing of the bracelet is done the proper way with screws. No corners are cut with the clasp, which is a substantial alternately polished and satin finished folding clasp with twin triggers so it's not friction fit, it's not a clamshell, it can't simply pop open. You must positively depress both triggers to open this watch. As you can see, solid end links, impressive bracelet finish. Everything you see that is polished is executed by hand against a milling device. This is done artisanally in a fashion that, quite frankly, most of the larger watch manufacturers have phased out. You won't see it's like at Omega or Rolex, at least not in the modern era, but Grand Seiko's optically smooth, visually flawless Zaratsu polish adds immense richness and, because of the evidence of hand craftsmanship, warmth, and humanity to this mechanical timepiece. And it is a mechanical timepiece. We'll talk about spring drive in a moment, but first let's talk about the aesthetic as viewed from above. Now you can see the contrast between the hoods of the lugs and the top of the links is dramatic against the polish of the bezel. The dial itself is black, but it's a matte black. It's not a gloss, it's not a lacquer. It's low reflective, which creates a spectacular and sparkling contrast with polished elements of the applied indices and the hands at center. Now, legibility is excellent, and you can see that there is luminescence outboard of each hour index, as well as on the minute and hour hand. So this is a versatile watch in that respect as well. You can see a small power reserve scale, at seven o'clock on the dial. And you'll note that this is a pre-2017 model as Seiko is still blazing at 12 o'clock rather than the subsequent Grand Seiko. You'll also note a number of aesthetic refinements that are simply spectacular, starting with the hands. Grand Seiko hands, which appear to be almost a three-dimensional construction set themselves apart from virtually everything else in the industry at almost every price point. You're only likely to see attention to detail on hands to this degree from the likes of micro manufacturers like Lang and Heine of Germany. They're faceted, they're polished, they're contrasting finished. You'll even note that the indices themselves are asymmetrical as there's a trapezoidal index at 6, 9, and 12, but there's more to it than that even as the 9 o'clock index is counterbalanced by an oblong date which has been extended so that horizontally 
it's rectangular and you'll also note it, it's easier to see the numeral itself is drawn out horizontally and flattened so that it, it nicely matches and parallels the form of the index directly opposed rather than being square or oblong from top to bottom as most dates are this one's been stretched across the center of the dial aperture and numeral you'll also note that the watch features a solid case back so you're going to have to use your imagination when conceiving of the caliber beneath. Now this is caliber 9R65, 30 joules, automatic winding with a 70 hour power reserve. It is built and regulated by a watchmaker and it is serviced indefinitely by a watchmaker. It is a spring driven automatic with a mechanical drivetrain up to the point that the regulating wheel is turned. The regulating wheel, and this is the secret to Grand Seiko, note how there are no steps or bobbles to the hand. It's a continuously smooth sweep. Look at it under microscope and it's still smooth. It's the only system Piaget has tried, but it's the only system in serial production in the world that features a continuously smooth sweeping hand. Now I talked about the spring powering the regulating wheel. Let's go into that a little bit deeper and discuss how it functions. A regulating wheel is kind of like a balance on a conventional watch, but it turns only in one direction. It creates an induced current that wakes up a quartz oscillator. The quartz oscillator in turn tells via back EMF or electromagnetical forces, it tells the regulating wheel how quickly to spin. If the watch is running too slow, it will spin and speed up. If the watch is running too fast, it will spin more slowly. So you have a mechanical power plant, you have a quartz oscillator powered only by the electricity that the spring generates, and hands driven by the force of the spring regulated by the quartz oscillator. All of this combines for precision of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Keep in mind a COSC certified Swiss chronometer is allowed to be inaccurate to the point of minus 6 seconds seconds or I should say plus six seconds minus four seconds per day. So plus or minus 15 per month is exquisite. It also features hacking seconds so you can stop the seconds hand and synchronize to a reference time and a quick set date so you can rapidly correct the date should the watch run down during a regular length months or simply run out of mainspring wind. Now the timepiece can be seen and purchased on our website. A timepiece for all occasions. See this one and put it on your wrist at thewatchbox.com.